Ruth Rose has the ability of perfect pitch. In a recent speech, Cast co-founder David Rose describes how his wife's ability becomes disabling in certain contexts. So I want to talk a little bit about variability. This is uh, my wife Ruth and I, and uh, there's variability between us in regards to music. Ruth has perfect pitch. Perfect pitch means that whenever a note is played, Ruth knows exactly what it is. It doesn't have to sing to herself or think about it. It's just the way that you recognize orange. When someone plays a 440 A, she just says A. She can't even stop herself. Me, not so much. <laughs> I have a generalized view of pitch. Things are high and low, and it's probably much closer uh, to the way that most of you are. Um, and we know something about the neuroscience of perfect pitch now, and you can probably see this little pink highlighted area on auditory cortex. And we know that, in fact, people with perfect pitch have a difference there. There's actually a couple things that have been found recently. One is they seem hyper-connected. If you really look at the close anatomy, there's more connections, more synapses, more interconnections among the parts there, hyper-connected. And there's an asymmetry. It's much larger, this area for pitch, on the left than on the right. So we can look at someone's brain and say, wow, that's a great brain for perfect pitch. The question, though, that I would like to ask you and myself is, who has a disability? So for Ruth, who grew up in a very musical family and all that, um, for Ruth, her view of happy married life ahead came from the sound of music. And it would be that we would have a bunch of kids and we'd be traveling in a Volkswagen bus, this is 1969, uh, singing in eight-part harmony. And that would glue a marriage together. Um, and to her, discovered way too late in our relationship, the idea that I had this small bb size area on the left plantum temporale <laughs> was a bitter disappointment. Um, and the, even worse, that I passed it on largely to our kids. <laughs> um, so that in fact, we can't sing an eight-part harmony. Um, and so to Ruth, for whom all of this is so natural and easy, she has this very disabled family that she travels with. And it's hard for her to even picture what it must be like to go around in life and have no idea what the pitch of music is or what I'm supposed to sing next, okay? But the lesson of this for me over the last decade has been understanding disability in a much richer way. So, uh, if we change context, disabilities change dramatically. So, I want to tell you about a different context. This one, I look much better. We go to a church together, Ruth and I, and in church, it's my one chance uh, during the week to sing. And I think you're supposed to sing. So I sing loud, and I, I'm out there. But of course, I'm really not on the exactly the note that's in the hymn book. And so picture Ruth. Um, here she is. She looks at the note in the hymn book and she knows exactly what to sing. But I'm not really singing that. And I'm next to her and we have 45 years of marriage and there's some reason to want to figure out how she can make this work for me too. But the person on her other side is also not singing at 440. And we go to this really old New England church, and the organ has long ago drifted away from 440. It's not even playing A anymore. <laughs> so for Ruth, singing at church is a terrible consternation. And she can't really do it because the notes in the book and the people around her and the organ, they're all weird and not right, except for the ones in the book. So Ruth... Doesn't, doesn't sing with joy. And I love the beautiful irony of being in church where everybody else in the church, more like me than her, I think of them as looking around and saying, isn't it too bad about Ruth? She married somebody who can't <laughs> sing. She could have married better. I know they all think that. Um, so the disability is in fact entirely contextual.